I'm Jackie Lohman. I am a teacher, professional communication journalism, and I am the founder and president of Beyond Limits Awakening Your Potential. I got matched with Saint in 2010. I didn't actually get Saint until the end of August, and they were trying to figure out if she would be large enough for me. I mean, it's kind of funny. They, they sent me an email, and they asked me when I was in my wheelchair, how far down to the ground did my hands go? And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm getting a, you know, I'm getting a pygmy dog. Um, and so she's plenty big. Um, and so they decided that she was the one. And then I had to go down and get her. And I missed the first two weeks of school because that was the time that they had. And if I hadn't gone then, I wouldn't have gotten sane and I would have had to go back on the list. She started being trained from birth, basically. And then when they get to be, they're in this puppy house, as they call it. Um, and then when they get to be about six months old, they go to prison. It's a, it's a neat thing for the prisoners because they get perks with it. They get more access. They can go all over the prison. And they take the dog everywhere. And they, they give the dog a lot of attention, a lot of care. I have a baby book, because um, I asked, you know, does everybody do baby books? And, and people said, oh, the guys don't do baby books. But I've got this, it's a giant, like a photo album, and it's got cloth, and it's got lace, and it's very cute. So I have pictures of her when she was this little, very serious looking little puppy, and her first bath with a rubber ducky. Good job! The dog knows what to do, but you have to be trained to tell the dog what to do, you know, what you need, what you need. And after you're together for a long time, you become kind of, you know, one heart and soul in two bodies. And so you don't have to give all these commands um, because they kind of know. I could not live by myself. I mean, I don't live by myself, I was saying, but I mean, I couldn't live just with uh, I couldn't live without another person, without Saint, because she helps me get dressed and undressed. She picks things up. Um, one of the things they ask is, uh, when you're going through your screening process, and they said, do you drop things? And I said, yeah. And they said, how often? And I said, well, on a bad day, I may drop something repeatedly. They can train any of the dogs to pick it up once. The dogs have their own personalities, and there are some of the dogs that, you know, they pick it up, you drop it again, and you're like, okay, pick it up for you once, Not too bad. And so Sandy's like, okay, 50 times, I want it. She does things that otherwise I would have to hire a person to come in and do. And people are lovely, but, you know, bad weather, you know, oh, I can't get to your house. And so um, she's made me more independent. What a good girl! Saint's a tool, and sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, what a harsh thing to refer to your dog as. But she is, that's why she's protected by the Americans with Disabilities Act. So she's a tool who helps me with my daily life. But she is an amazing companion. And so I do things perhaps, I don't know if I do all the things that I do if I would be as adventurous if I didn't have Saint because um, I've got, you know, my best bud here, and so I can always turn to her and say, can you believe this is going, this is happening? But because of her, there's really, I believe, that there's nothing that we can't do together. I think from what I've heard that sometimes people think, oh, the poor dog, the dog's a slave. You know, the dog is, you know, a prisoner. It's got to, you know, work for you. Um, I've always had dogs. Um, I've never had a happier dog than Saint. She really, um, when they're trained, they train them with love and positive reinforcement, food, frankly. Dogs want to please you. I think that people don't realize the difference between a service dog and a comfort animal or a therapy dog or all those different terms. A service dog is protected by the ADA because the service dog has to help you with one or more major life tasks. And so, um, I don't have Saint because 
I'm lonely or because you know I'm anxious or something like that. I have her because I can't walk. I can't do these functions. And it's the same with, with people and so there's so many, you know, like you know, diabetes, uh, seizure detection, um, bal I mean there's so many different kinds. I think people have a misconception that, uh, oh, you love her like your child, uh, and I call her my baby, but I love her like a part of my body because, I mean, this is my leg. I was going to go to a conference and it was in Hawaii and I was really excited. So Saint had to get special shots and we were you know, getting ready and ready and ready. Um, but all summer long, it was in October that it was going to take place, and all summer long I just hadn't been feeling very well. Um, I eat something and I get this awful pain. Um, I kept eliminating stuff from my diet, I thought oh, I'm allergic to this and so. Um, and I think that comes from having lifelong physical challenges because you, you're you so used to, okay, I'll deal with this. And so, I mean, probably any rational person would be like, why am I allergic to all this food suddenly? So we were down to probably saltines and ginger ale, which is really a good diet. And we got into October and I'd gone to the emergency room a couple of times because I'd go home and I had this pain and I couldn't, I, I couldn't rest, it was just, um, and every time I'd go to the emergency room they would do an EKG and they'd say, it's not your heart, it's like, I know it's not my heart, but there's something wrong. So the last time I'd gone, it was a Monday night and my long-suffering friend, Kim Ann, lives on the way to the hospital, so I called her and I said, I just want somebody to know. My mom was still alive, but she was in her 90s, she was very hard of hearing. Um, she, I, I took care of her, and I thought, well, you know, and it's midnight, I'm not going to you know, wake my mother up and say, I'm going to the emergency room. So, so she went with me, and we were in the emergency room for five hours, and they did the EKG, and they sent me home with my Lanta. It's like, no, it's not my Lanta that I need. So we get to Thursday, we're, I'm supposed to go to Hawaii on the next Tuesday, and so Thursday night, uh, my students were doing focus groups, and I was sitting there. I'm always cold in October, and I started to sweat. I was so hot, and I was in awful pain. And so I said to the kids, uh, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. Great job. I, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine." So I went home, and my mother said, "Are you okay?" And I said, yeah, "I'm okay. I just need to go upstairs and lie down and just, just kind of, you know, catch my breath a little bit. Will you feed the dogs? I have the dog." So she fed the dogs, and then they came up, and. Every time I try, and I was in kind of running out, it was so wet. And every time I tried to get up, the pain was so bad that I would faint. And so Saint kept me alive all night because she would revive me. You know, she would revive me, and I, I would be like, I'm okay, okay, leave me alone. But she didn't. So she kept licking me, and she kept dropping stuff on my head. You know, so that I would revive until about five or six a.m. And I was, I was coherent enough that I called my friend. Come in. So my friend came out and went to the hospital. So I'm alive now because of Saint. Because without her, I what was going on was I was bleeding to death and I didn't realize it. And without her, I don't think I would have regained consciousness. And so, um, so sometimes people say, you know, what's the best thing she's ever done for you? Save my life. So, and then all of the day-to-day -day things. But I owe her. I owe her, and then I owe my friend as well. I think that maybe any dog would know that there was something wrong. I think service dogs are just, um, they're very resourceful. They have to figure out stuff and so, because um, my golden retriever was still alive. He was just sacked out in his, his bed. He wasn't going to revive. He's like, okay, she wants to go to sleep, I'll go to sleep. And so, so I always say a lot. I, mean, I, I owe her my life actually. She thinks everybody's nice. I don't let her know that that's not the case. You know? But everybody's nice to say because, you know, she's, she's, she's the best girl.